cannot believe we're halfway through October. I am actually confused, but I'm also super stoked for Halloween, so at the same time, I'm very excited. I hope you guys are ready for some fall DIY projects, because that is exactly what I'm sharing in today's video. I have a couple of really fun and really easy and super affordable DIY projects that are definitely going to spice up your room and put you in that autumn, cozy, comfortable vibe, which we all know and we all love. Everyone loves it. Like, if you don't like autumn, what are you doing? Like, I'm kind of confused. And this is kind of going to be part one of two videos, because I'm actually uploading another video in a couple of days that's going to be a fall room transformation which is so fun so in this video I'm DIYing some stuff and in the next video I am shopping with you guys doing a lot of really cool stuff and then we're going to put the DIY projects in the space and sort of decorate for the fall times and if you'd like to follow me for your daily dose of DIY on Instagram definitely do so right there Lone Fox Home I post updates projects all that sort of fun stuff over there and you can also check out my personal Instagram it's I'm Drew Scott also up there for more fashion or honestly if you just want your daily dose of Drew so yeah follow me there too but without further ado let's just jump on into today's projects. I really wanted to recreate those pumpkins I saw at Target, so I picked up three of these pie pumpkins and then some white spray paint, some black paint, and some paint brushes. And all that I did for this DIY was spray paint the pumpkins completely white. And keep in mind, these aren't going to be able to be used multiple years in a row. It's just for a like current situation type of thing. And I did do about three coats of white spray paint just to make sure that they're nice and coated. And then I used a bit of black paint. And for some reason, this part did not film, but I used a paintbrush and just splattered on some white paint dots and added a couple black ones and that finishes off your pumpkin. It's super easy. You're just going to splatter it on and you're good to go. this autumn yarn wall macrame hanging. I used a couple different yarns in a more minimal fall color palette and then I also used some scissors and a wooden dowel. And this is super easy you guys if you just watch what I'm doing it's so much easier to actually watch than have me talk about it. But what I did was use my yarn. I started off with a cream color and I measured out just a random amount and then I doubled it, tripled it, quadrupled it up. Um, I did about five to ten strands per little section or little color section on this macrame wall hanging and then what I did was fold them in half loop them on to the actual dowel and then pull the ends through and that's going to be your first color so this is the cream color then I moved on to gray and for this section I wanted it to be a little bit wider so I actually added of course more strands of this color so I went on and added about probably 10 strands in this section so I cut out 10 of them and then I looped them on and I actually looped them in two just because I didn't want it to be one super thick one and then this is going to create your second band of color which is that gray tone and when you do this at random, it's kind of nice because the ends actually just fall at random lengths. And I think that it adds a very organic look to it as opposed to like a very structured look. So then I went on and added this one that has little bits of speckles in it. And then added this one as well, which was really pretty because it's kind of like an autumn themed one. And then as you can see here, the ends all look very, very random and sporadic, which is something that I really loved. And I just continued on with this process going all the way down the pole. <laughs> Once I added all of my desired colors, I used this thin strand of yarn just to create sort of a hanger for it. So I tied it onto both ends of the pole and I did leave quite a bit of the ends of the pole just because I love the way that that looks and that finishes off your wall hanging. And next up we have this super cute little acorn garland and what I used was some book pages, a pair of scissors, some clips, string, and a pencil. And keep in mind that these book pages are from a book that I've already read that's been sitting on the shelf for literally years. And I'm just going to repurpose it and use it a lot in future DIYs because I love the way that book text looks um, on projects. And what I did was I just freehanded an acorn on an open little section there and cut it out to use as a stencil for all of my acorn shapes. And what I did after that was just trace my acorn over the top of some of the book text and keep in mind that when you cut through these book pages, you can actually cut through multiple at once because they are very thin. So you can layer them up and cut about five pages at once. So you get a lot of um, use out of just one cut. And then what I did was create a mask. And this is just by using the initial acorn that we drew out. And I just cut off the top portion. So that way I can lay this over the top of the acorn when I spray it with spray paint and it will not get on the bottom half. So we're essentially masking off the bottom portion of the acorn and just spraying the top portion 
of the acorn, if that makes sense. Pretty self-explanatory if you look at the screen. And I did this on a couple of them. And then I realized I kind of wanted to create an inverse mask and spray the bottom half of the acorn as well. So that's exactly what I did. Once those were all dry and nice and neat, I taped up my little banner in the section that I wanted it to go in and use these black little clips I found at Joann's Fabrics just to clip them up on the string. And that's all you have to do. And you can really do this with any fall motif, such as a pumpkin or an owl or whatever you want to do. But I thought the acorns were cute. And it's a shallow I think this wreath is actually one of my favorite projects in the video, and I used some burlap ribbon, a metal ring, scissors, some book paper, and then some random flowers I got at the Joann's fabric store. And all that you have to do for this project is use a hot glue gun, which I also forgot to mention the supplies. And this wider burlap ribbon is found in the floral section. It's super inexpensive, especially if you use a 50% off coupon and you get 30 feet of it, which is quite a bit. All you're gonna do is ruffle it up and just hot glue it down in the center point all the way around this metal ring. And this metal ring was found I think in the embroidery section and you're just going to go all the way around the ring adding little bits of hot glue at a time and then ruffling it up and just sort of like placing it on top of the hot glue and letting it dry and then it's going to hold its shape and kind of give a lot of texture and a lot of movement and just like visual interest to this wreath as opposed to just having it flat or I just personally think it's like a little bit more fun this way I just like the way that it looks and I went all the way around the edge of the ring uh, gluing this down Once you reach the ending point, you're just going to use a pair of scissors to cut off that extra. And then I did use a little bit of hot glue just to secure down that edge a little bit. But don't worry because this area um, that we finished it at is actually going to be the starting point of where we're going to add all the decorations. So all I did was just cut off or pull off the little flowers from the sections. And there's also some pine cones and these little like berry items and these daisies and such. And I just glued them in a matter that I thought looked really pretty down onto the center section of this wreath or the bottom section, I guess. And I just wanted it to sort of be a focal point as opposed to having it all around the entire wreath. And then what I did was use some of that book paper I used in the acorn garlands and I cut out some leaves and I just love the way that this looks. I think it adds a very handmade element to the project. So I just randomly cut out some leaf shapes, both larger and smaller and then folded them in half to sort of give them an actual 3D element. And once those are all folded, you can use a bit of hot glue and just glue them in wherever you think they look nice, just basically behind the flowers, just filling in all the excess gaps and sort of making it look very finished and clean. So I glued in all of the leaves. You can also fold them in half if you want to or cut them to make them fit a little bit nicer, uh, just to have them peek out behind uh, little flowers and such. And then we're just going to add the ring on the end or on the inside, I guess you could say, with a little bit of yarn. Let that dry and you could hang it on your door and be really good and festive for the fall season. Okay, honestly, those were some good ones, right? Those were some good fall projects. We all love a good autumn decor piece. Like, who doesn't? I hope you guys really enjoyed those and it gets you guys in the mood for fall because I know I definitely am. Even though Los Angeles still, halfway through October, is not perfectly ready for fall. It's slowly creeping there. Like, during the days, it's still 98, but at night, it gets down to like 60 and then I get a little cold, but I open my window larger just so I can be frigid in my own room. <laughs> Don't forget to also subscribe to my channel for more videos every single week that are all DIY and home focused and I will catch you all in my next one. Have an amazing day and I love you all so much. Bye. And it's a swing.